welcome back in this lecture we'll be discussing kelvin and absolute temperature scale in the earlier lecture we had discussed the two carnot principles and introduced the carnot cycle the two carnot principles are illustrated schematically here the carnot principle states that if we compare the efficiency of an irreversible heat engine with that of a reversible heat engine, the reversible heat engine always has greater efficiency. We proved this by assuming uh, the irreversible heat engine has greater efficiency and such an assumption violated the Kelvin-Planck statement of second law. The second cardinal principle stated that the efficiency of a reversible heat engine only depends upon the temperature of the high temperature reservoir and the temperature of the low temperature reservoir, irrespective of the engine fluid that is part of the heat engine. Okay, so irrespective of that, uh, we can define efficiency just based on TH and TL. This is great consequence because we can come up with a scale of temperature uh, which is independent of a thermometric fluid. That is the subject matter of this lecture. We also introduced the Carnot cycle. So here, uh, the first issue we have to address is how do you represent a cycle in thermodynamic uh, phase space? So, uh, Carnot came up with a particular representation of the cycle. So, involving two isothermal, there are two isothermal uh, processes here. One takes up heat and one rejects heat. And then these two are adiabatic processes. There's an isothermal expansion, adiabatic expansion then isothermal compression, and then adiabatic compression. So the issue to notice is we have come up with a way of representing a cycle in the phase space. All right, so this is what we covered and the consequences uh, of uh, this kind of representation of uh, a cycle was also uh, discussed in the last lecture. What is the implication of Carnot's second principle? The central implication is that the efficiency of a reversible heat engine is just a function of TH and TM, the high temperature reservoir temperature, uh, temperature of the low temperature reservoir, right? So we know that the efficiency can be represented as one minus the heat rejected to the low temperature reservoir divided by the heat absorbed from the high temperature reservoir. So we can write QH by QL as a function of TH and TL. This being so, we will imagine, again, we will, we are going to discuss a, a thought device. Okay, so in, in, in thermodynamics, uh, the level of math is not that high, okay, so, but the level of logic is uh, fairly high and subtle, okay, so you have to get used to these kinds of arguments. So here we are imagining three heat engines. So this heat engine absorbs QL from the high temperature reservoir, rejects QC to the low temperature reservoir, and generates this much amount of work. So these are two heat engines operating in a particular fashion. This heat engine also takes up Q, Q1 from the high temperature reservoir, just as this heat engine, but it rejects heat. And this rejected heat is at temperature T2, which is absorbed by another reversible heat engine. And this heat engine rejects Q3 to the low temperature reservoir, this Q3 is the same as this Q3. 
So why do we uh, do this? We are going to use this fact and then analyze this system and compare it with this system. That's the objective here. So I would say that this is just simple uh, algebra. Q1 by Q2 is just f of T1 by T2 and so on. Then I can show that Q1 by Q3, I can write it in this manner, following which I can write that function T1, T3 is a multiplicative uh, pro product of this function times this function. This will be satisfied only if the function f t1 t2 is of this form. Right? So following this, what Kelvin suggested, uh, this is an important uh, um, argument because I can write q1 divided by q3 as phi t1 divided by phi t3. Kelvin suggested that this phi t1 should be just th, okay? And phi t3 should be tl itself, okay? So this uh, gives a way of reframing temperature scales based on efficiency of reversible heat engine. Okay? So even though it's not practical in the sense that reversible process itself cannot be realized in reality, but it gives you a logical way of thinking through uh, the temperature scale, making it independent of uh, thermometric material. Okay, So we had earlier looked at uh, thermometry and we had given certain con conditions on what is an ideal thermometric fluid. Uh, we are going one step beyond that in this case, using principles of Carnot cycle and Carnot's principles. Okay, so here we are showing that just the efficiency of uh, Carnot heat engine is equal to uh, TH divided by TM. So just knowing the ratio cannot give you cannot give us an absolute value for temperature scale. So what was decided was a particular temperature was decided for uh, the triple point, okay? So the triple point was assigned a value of uh, 273.16 Kelvin. So that is water at triple point. So this is the phase diagram of water. We have uh, looked at this in the first half of the course. So please go back and look at it. At, go and look at what is the value of the triple point in the Celsius scale. So once you know the ratio, and once you know one absolute value uh, of that of triple point, this is arbitrary, okay? So the value assigned to the triple point is arbitrary. Earlier in Celsius scale, we had assigned a value very close to zero for the triple point of water. Here you are assigning uh, a value of 273.16. With this, we can convert the Celsius scale to the Kelvin scale. So uh, this can be done. For example, steam point in uh, the Celsius scale is 100. So uh, the steam point in the Kelvin scale would be approximately 373.15 and so on, right? So any temperature uh, can be defined using the Kelvin scale in the following manner, 273.15 times Q H by QL because T by 273.16 uh, is, uh, is a way of uh, defining uh, the efficiency and so on, right? All right, so where do we go from here? The next topic uh, is the analysis of Carnot heat engine. One thing I would like to emphasize, this particular point that the, or even if you go back and look at this, the efficiency, as soon as we say the efficiency is independent of 
the thermometric fluid, we can use an ideal gas and analyze the Carnot cycle and end up with this uh, conclusion. This is, we arrived at this conclusion, that is the efficiency is just the ratio of TH by TL. Uh, efficiency can be obtained from TH by TL uh, using a logical argument uh, presented here. But there is another way of obtaining the same result by assuming that the, the fluid of a heat engine is that of an ideal gas using the analysis of ideal gas uh, for these four steps, isobaric, isothermal expansion, uh, adiabatic expansion, then isothermal compression, adiabatic uh, compression. All these four uh, processes can be analyzed quite easily using an ideal gas. We, using such an analysis also, we can uh, come to the same conclusion. So there are two ways to come to the same conclusion. So in the next lecture, we will be looking at uh, the Carnot heat engine.